71 degrees out there, and uh, Kevin Fisher's on the line. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Ron. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, and I want to say congratulations to you and Canton City Council, not necessarily for the legislation that you've been passing, but I think you guys are, are working pretty hard to do the right thing down there. I don't always agree with what you guys are doing, but I agree that you've got to do something, and you're doing that. Well, I think we've got a good, uh, we got a good core group of freshmen in this year. Uh, you know, five of the uh, of the twelve members of council are in their first term, uh, which is you know, it's made uh, it's definitely a different makeup down there uh, than, than we've seen in the past, and, and that's you know can is maybe not either good or bad, but it's definitely different. Right, right. I would agree to that. Now, specifically, uh, Monday night, uh, Canton City Council did pass. Uh, legislation uh, for foreclosures. Uh, uh, the the uh, headline of the repository said clean up foreclosures. Uh, what's that all about, Kevin? Well, uh, excuse me, but thanks for asking. Ron. The, uh, this is an ordinance that uh, is kind of, uh, it's really not even as much geared at foreclosures as it is foreclosed and bank owned homes. And what we're trying to deal with is, is the aftermath of the thousands of bank-owned properties and vacant properties that we have in the city. And no one really has a real grasp on just how many of that is. A good indication, I, I feel, is the uh, the list of properties the city is responsible for knowing right now, which is between four to 5,000 properties. Are those vacant homes? Is that where you get the accounting from? Yes, those are four to 5,000 uh, vacant homes that we're out uh, cutting the grass for. And, and a great number of those are, uh, are bank-owned or in foreclosure um, or often uh, bundled as part of large mortgage swaps where somebody got five houses they wanted and they threw in 30 they didn't want on the deal to get rid of them. And so... You know, these are properties that are owned uh, in, in large part by financial institutions that have the financial means to take care of them. But through loopholes in Ohio law, uh, they're dumping that on to taxpayers. Okay, uh, let me uh, let our listeners know we're talking with uh, Kevin Fisher, Fifth Ward Councilman for the City of Canton. Uh, and then, Kevin, when you guys pass this legislation, uh, I think, it, uh, and you're right, I think it's important to note that uh, it deals with the already foreclosed upon homes. Uh, and uh, uh, you mentioned that nobody knows how many they are or where they are. So one of the parts of the legislation requires a registry of the properties? Yeah, the, uh, the, currently the city keeps a, uh, a registry of nuisance vacants, uh, which are properties that we identify uh, as being a nuisance property, uh, and it could be because of uh, frequent, you know, board ups or break-ins. Uh, well, this actually goes a step further and goes, this, we need to know uh, when a, a foreclosure is discharged and uh, the people are out of the house. We don't, there's no, no one comes and tells us when the property is vacant. Uh, so this requires that uh, once a, a house becomes vacant, uh, and, and transfers through a lien into a bank on property, that that is registered with us so that we're now aware that it's vacant and we can keep an eye on the maintenance. Now, uh, so, so, after so, that, so after that happens, it, it goes on that list, and then uh, they, pay, they pay for registering, though, right? Yes. There's a, this ordinance is uh, designed to be self-sustaining so that uh, we're, we're trying to tackle this problem without pulling money out of, out of other programs or trying to increase revenue. So there is a cost for registering the, uh, the uh, vacant properties. Uh, and then once they're registered, uh, to me, I think the key provision of it uh, is just designed on some things that other cities have had success with. It requires that a maintenance bond be placed on the property. Now, a maintenance bond... Uh, is, a, is essentially they're ensuring their ability to maintain the property, the banks are. They would place a $10,000 bond, which you know, they can get, depending on, you know, obviously their credit rating, you know, somewhere between $700 to $1,000 for a $10,000 bond. As long as they are maintaining their property, we never have to touch that bond. If they go and sell the house later on, the bond is released back to them. The, if we are, as taxpayers, going and mowing the lawn,
on, boarding it up, eventually even tearing a property down. It should not be done with taxpayer money. Uh, it, we would never tolerate that with an individual homeowner uh, where we'll go and maintain the property for them at no charge. But we do this with banks and mortgage service companies. So, so if they, they register the property, it costs $125, they get a, a, a $10,000 bond, uh, from anywhere from seven hundred to a thousand dollars, and then if the city has to incur any expenses in mowing or boarding it up, we've been turning it down, uh, tearing it down. Uh, then uh, you guys go after the bond money, right? We go after the bond money. Okay. Uh, and, and, and my view is, you know, we've uh, we've had plenty of bailouts for banks. Uh, every time I mow a lawn or board up a house or tear one down. I'm bailing him out again. Okay, this is Kevin um, Fisher. He's I, a. I got to keep reminding our folks who you are. No, that's right. <laughs> he's You're a right councilman for Kent City Council. We're talking about the foreclosure law that council just passed the other night. Kevin, what are the banks thinking about this? Um, you know, I've had uh, pretty interesting. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, probably no more than an hour or two after our council office opened. It was funny, I, I uh, received an email, as did other council members, from a, a mortgage servicer who would love to meet with us to show what a wonderful job they do uh, taking care of their vacant properties. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure, obviously, that there are some that are, uh, but the large, uh, the large majority of vacant properties we have in the city are not being maintained. Do you think they're going to complain about uh, the added expense here, the... Uh uh -huh. I'm, I'm positive they will. Are they going to try I, to put that back on the uh, citizen, on the homeowner, or any on their clients? I, I would, I would be shocked if I found out that every bank in from the big and small suddenly complied with this uh, I, in, in, in the stamp of the finger. We're anticipating a fight on enforcement. Uh, I, I believe that you know the, the old saying, "Pick your battles." I think you know. Taking on uh, blight and taking on vacant properties and decaying neighborhoods is a battle that is worth fighting. Now, so, uh, uh, I, I hate Sorry. to keep interrupting you, but i got to move quickly here. I, a lot sure. of questions I want to try to get some answers from. Uh, what about enforcement? Do you have a, a, a set department or, or team, or, or how do you enforce this? Yeah, the, uh, a, a lot of uh, the, the, the power of enforcement to this We'll go through our, our building department slash code enforcement office. Mm -hmm. uh, and they work right now um, you know, kind of as a, as a team with the health departments, with uh, the law department on this. Uh, so it, it could be uh, the, the lead is going to be going through the, the Kansas City building department. Mm -hmm. uh, but at, at every step of the way, there's going to have to be a process where really even us as a city are, are not going to be able to snap our fingers and use this as a magic bullet uh, or a silver bullet to solve this problem. No. We've had conversations with neighborhood associations uh, about helping us identify houses as they become vacant. That was going to be my next question. Uh, what, what has been the reaction so far uh, of those neighborhood organizations and also the individual homeowners? Yeah, the, uh, the reaction I've had uh, so far has been overwhelmingly positive. And, and I always caution people that, look, I, if this was easy, it would have been done a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did not expect this to, to be able to wave a magic wand and, and suddenly tomorrow, you know, the rainbows be flowing over the city on mm -hmm. our streets of gold. Now, are, have, uh, have other cities now. done this? Yeah, this is actually modeled on uh, some similar programs that have been done in, uh, in cities in Massachusetts and Illinois. Uh, there have been some um, smaller versions of it in, uh, in some cities in Ohio as well. And, and they've all uh, reported success with it? And varying levels of success. I mm -hmm. think uh, this, the, the ones who have been aggressive about enforcing it uh, have had more success than others. Yeah, I'm always of the mindset that you will get what you tolerate. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we, if we uh, simply tolerate uh, our neighborhoods to be blighted with these buildings and, and uh, the cave, then that's what we'll get. Now, uh, in your email and Facebook notification of this, uh, which I got last night, uh, you mentioned Norma Mills. Oh, yeah. What, what role does she play here? Yeah, uh, it's funny, Rhonda. The, the last time I think I spoke with you in person was the day I ran into Norma. Uh, about and she first brought this to my attention. Uh, this was last October. I ran into Norma uh, at downtown Ken. 
She uh, invited me to a community meeting. She had been knocking on doors uh, trying to get people together on this idea. Uh, well, this may come as no surprise to you when I went to her meeting. I was supposed to talk for two minutes and ended up talking for half an hour. Well, you're supposed uh, to talk for two minutes here and you talk for half an hour. You can ask my wife. <laughs> it is not something I say for the radio. It happens every day. <laughs> but, uh, and it got to the point where there's several beings along the line. Norma's really, honestly, the driving force behind this. She has been a, a pit bull on this issue. Just, uh, you know, absolutely as dedicated of a human being as you'll find. And, and I've tried to just, you know, people want to come up and give me a pat in the back and go, listen, you know, I did the easy part. Normal was the one out uh, knocking on doors, uh, along with the people from uh, the Ohio Organizing Collaborative and, and Fight for a Fair Economy back when she was with them. They really did the honest to God real work. Yeah. Uh, I got to sign my name on, a, on an ordinance and push it through. And, and uh, you, you, got the, you got the big time interview on the Ponder Show, huh? I, you know, exactly <laughs> what it is. You know, the, the real work is done in the organizing. Well, that, we, we appreciate the work that you've done. Kevin Fisher, Fifth Ward Councilman, Democrat for the City of Canton. Uh, appreciate you getting a, uh, being a guest in our program today, too, my man. We got to move on. Uh, keep us surprised, and uh, anytime you've got some sort of announcement or some activity coming out of Canton City Council, let us know because we want our folks to know as well. I'll do that. Thanks, Ryan. Right. Appreciate you making time for me. Thank you, Kevin, and thank Norma Mills when you see her for me too. Will you I please? will do that. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Thanks a lot. It is 71 degrees out there. It is 11:23, and yes, we'll be right back.